Hey guys, so I get asked all the time about my self tanning routine So I wanted to make a video and share it with you guys my tips on how to get the perfect sunless tan My favorite self tanning product on the market right now is the Bondi Sands self tanning foam in the color dark I love the color I get from even just one application of this tanner. I love it even more after two. In this video, I'm going to do just one coat so you can see the difference. As you can see, one coat gets you pretty dark. It's a nice even tan if you want to get crazy like me and look like you've been out on the islands. You can go with two coats. I ordered this online from Australia. They are not paying me to say this. I found this product myself, tried it, loved it, definitely approved. This stuff is my favorite. You want to make sure your self tan comes out perfect, right? Or as close to it as you can get. One of the most important things you can do is prep your skin properly. First things first, we want to shower and clean our skin. You want to make sure you don't use any soap with any deodorants in it. If you've ever used self tanner and gotten it on deodorant, you will notice that it turns a very ugly green color and that is not the color we are trying to be. <laughs> well, unless you're going for that like Grinch kind of vibe. You never know. Anyway, shower, lather up, make sure we get our skin nice and clean. Some people exfoliate first then shave. I prefer to shave than exfoliate because I feel like that that makes my skin a lot smoother. I have tried different ones on the market. This one that I'm using is from Bath & Body Works. I really like it. It's also very hydrating. I tend to have really dry skin, and that's something you really don't want whenever you are using a self tanner, because if your skin is dry, the product is really going to cling to those areas. So we wanna get all that dead skin off and give our self tanner a nice surface to be applied to. After you shave and exfoliate, you're going to want to dry off. Make sure you're completely dry. Make sure you don't apply any lotions, body creams, or deodorant. I personally don't apply my self tanner to my face just because of my skincare regimen. It would be pointless and a waste of product, and I don't wanna waste my product. If you do wanna put self tanner on your face, I would go ahead and apply your facial moisturizer so that your skin's nice and hydrated. And if you are going to apply the self tanner to your face that is totally fine I know a lot of people do I would definitely test it on an area though first so that you don't have some crazy reaction especially right before an important event I think you should do that on your whole body too unless you're like me and you just dive right in what's living without taking a little risk every now and then Next, you're gonna wanna take your favorite body lotion and you're gonna wanna apply that to your hands. Make sure you get in between your knuckles, around your cuticles. You know, I kind of go up my wrist. Think of it like you are blending. This lotion is gonna keep the product from developing as dark. So you don't wanna get your hands, feet, knees, elbows, those areas too dark. I do my elbows as well. Like I said, my knees and my feet. After you've applied your body lotion, then you are going to take the Bondi Sand Self Tanning Mitt and you're going to begin applying the product. I use a couple pumps for each arm. You can always go back and add more, so start on the lighter side and see where you go. I save the area around my elbows and my elbows for last blend it in as much as possible so that you don't see any streaks. One of my favorite tricks to do that I actually learned from Jaclyn Hill was to use a makeup buffing brush to do the back of my hands and also go over my neck and chest after I've applied the product. It blends out so perfectly, you will honestly love it. I do my hands and you know down my wrist, and it just comes out so much nicer than when you just try to use the mitt because I would get still a lot of unevenness and honestly a little bit too dark. So the brush is awesome. I definitely recommend you don't skip that step and you will be super happy with the results. I also did that on my feet. And then at the very end, I did lightly kind of just go over my elbows and knees with whatever was left on the brush just to make sure I didn't have any streaks or patchiness on those areas. Now for those of you at home who have a hard time getting their back, my secret is I'm gonna to take that tanning mitt and I'm gonna flip it over. Now I'm using the back of my hand to get to those hard to reach areas on my back. Be patient, look in the mirror, make sure everything's blended out. Now if you do see a little bit of patchiness on your back, that is totally fine. As long as you have the product fully saturated the entire back area, you are going to be just fine, I promise. That is gonna rinse off once you shower. That is just the colored mousse. It's to help see where the product's going. The actual tan color is going to develop over the next several hours. Now it's What's great about this product is it says that you can shower after one hour. If you're like me, 
I prefer to sleep in my self-tanner. I want to let it get as dark as it possibly can and really reach its full potential. I sleep in it. It sits on my skin for six to eight hours, depending on how much sleep I'm getting that night. And then I shower in the morning. Here is something super important. When you shower the next day, do not use soap. You are going to just rinse off that color guide and then pat dry. You don't want to rub or scrub your body. Just pat yourself very nicely dry. And then I like to apply the Bondi Sands self-tanning milk to hydrate my skin and really lock in that tanner. It's enriched with aloe and vitamin E and really hydrates the skin. Remember, self-tanners tend to be a little drying. I already have dry skin. I don't want my tan to crack or fade away faster, so I like to use that product to help maintain my tan. That's it for my self-tanning routine. I think it came out pretty nice. I'm very happy with it. 30 minutes after your first coat dries, you can go back in and apply a second coat. I'm always doing my tan late at night before bed, so I'm pretty tired and I just go straight to bed. I'm gonna go with, I'm sure that probably comes out pretty good, but I haven't tested that myself. So if you've tried it, let me know how it goes. One other product that I didn't talk about yet that I have tried and I really like is the Bondi Sand Liquid Gold. It is a self-tanning dry oil. What's really cool about this is you can put it on and you don't have to wash it off. I don't get as dark from this as I do when I use the dark tanning foam, but I do like it. I have used it. It does give you some color. I loved that it dried and I didn't feel sticky or gross throughout the day. So definitely really like this product in combination with the dark tanning foam. That wraps it up for my self tanning tips and my routine. I hope that helps some of you. If you have any self tanning tips, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Make sure you guys give this video a big thumbs up and I will see you guys next week.